so I don't need to revitalize nothing. Everybody know who I am. I'm Law Murray at DrewLeague.com, and I'm taking you behind the scenes of the 2016 Drew League Championship between the John Williams Division Champion Basketball for Life and the Stanley Dill Division Champion Jug Life. You know, we know everybody, whoever we play, is going to give us our be their best, and so we want to just be prepared, and, and whoever we play will will be prepared to play. Uh, we're playing as a team, playing together. Guys have been playing a couple games together, and we're getting the chemistry right, so that's all that really matters. You know, we are our own worst enemy sometimes, and once we got our act together, we were able to turn it around. Um, we got a lot of hard-working uh, hard players that have the skill to, to pull off a highlight everywhere. We got Nick, we got Sec Henry, um, we just got a lot of people, so we all, we all, and we all hang out together too outside of this, outside of basketball, so that's what really makes us click. And how does Basketball for Life get to 15-0? I mean, I think we just got to rebound, they both big teams, and then just play our game, you know, run the floor and get open looks. All I want to do is win and try to win this championship. We win this championship, the whole team is MVP to me. It was a great season, very unexpected uh, turns to the season, but it was a great season. You know, once again, just like last year, it was so competitive going down the stretch. You had to figure it out, Law. It was tough. Well, first of all, Jug Life had to um, redo their team in the middle of the season. Uh, the first couple of weeks, JaVale McGee, who's a big, big problem in the middle for anybody, uh, is not playing. Uh, then he begins to play. They add Kenneth Fareed, they lose Kenneth Fareed, uh, they change their team around a little bit, then they pick up Nick Young. So they kind of had some situations they had to figure out, and I think they're still doing that. Well, basketball for life season, uh, having an undefeated uh, record, of course, uh, has put a lot of pressure on Barron and Casper Ware, and I've expected this, this, uh, this matchup, actually. You know, Jug Life has struggled the last couple of seasons since they've been a part of Drew, but I know players such as Nick and Sec, they've been playing since they were in high school, and they really want this title. Same as Barron and Casper, they've been playing since they were in, in, in high school as well. So, you know, it's going to be a tough matchup, and I think it's going to be so exciting for the fans to watch. BB for Life, same type of situation. They lose their two big guys, you know, relatively in the same week. Uh, they pick up all everything Stanley Johnson. Um, they, they lean on Stanley, Terrence Ross, and Casper Ware to, to handle that, and they've been doing it. Basketball for life, they've just been consistent, trying to become the first team to go undefeated since problems. How would you describe Jug Life? Uh, long, athletic, explosive. Uh, Javel posed a huge problem for us at 11 offensive rebounds, so containing him is going to be crucial for BB4L. Casper Ware dictates what goes on a lot on defense. Uh, and then they added Stanley Johnson, which was a big piece. So uh, if they can keep up the pressure throughout the whole game and rebound, they're going to be fine. Of course, Barron comes in late in the game and kind of controls the floor of the game, and I think they should be okay. With the Jug Light team, you're talking about a team that just got hot late. You know, when those guys came, when JaVale, the Fareeds, um, Jordan Hamilton, they all came together and they have one goal. And it's hard to beat a team that's hungry. You know, I, I, I fell victim to them yesterday in the, in the division finals. Um, they just they just want to win. You know, they're, they're, they know they're the underdog. And the whole season they've been the underdog. And now they get the opportunity to beat the top dog. What was the moment that you knew your team was good in that redemption game, in the Stanley Dill Championship game? Um, well, when we fought back, you know, so the adversity, so what we can do, you know, we had seven points in the first quarter, and then halftime we had to make some adjustments because Gibson was killing us, so we had to trap him. Plus, you know, scoring 37 points in the uh, third quarter gave us that lift. That's the most we scored in the whole season, so, you know, can't get us that push. I'm lost for words right now because we should be playing today, but the ball didn't agree with us, so that's how I got to look at it. Smart Money's on BB4L. They just have a stronger roster. Um, they have a little bit more of a defensive edge, and they play together uh, rather than uh, one guy dribbling up the ball and taking the shot. So we'll see if uh, Jug Life can play as a unit and whether or not JaVale can be motivated to play under the basket and get mean with the elbows. Looking up to basketball for life, what can you say about that team? Uh, that's the best team in the Drew League, to me. I mean, it's hard to say it right now, but I think they're going to go out there and prove it today. Uh, my man Cass, I've known since we were seven years old. 
uh, no one's going to play harder than him and put his heart and soul into this game. So, to me, basketball for life is top to bottom, the best team in this league, and they're in the best division in this in the group. Baron, that's my cousin, so it's like a family thing. I want him to win, I want to win, but at the same time, I'm thinking like, hey, they haven't lost, so we got to give them their first loss and uh, continue playing hard. Jug Life is a good team, man. Uh, real big, athletic. We're going to have to put pressure on these guys early and try to speed these guys up. We all knew this was going to be crazy. We've been talking about it since last night. We huddled up, went out to go eat, talked about it. We already know it's going to be crazy. Um, the atmosphere is already coming in. You know, everybody's piling in already, and it's super early, so it's going to be a great game. God, nah, just stay tuned. You're going to see a good show today. Oh man, um, it was a great uh, start to the game. Games, uh, the teams, both teams going back and forth at each other. Basically, the beginning of the game, I seen it came out a little tight. I mean, a few turnovers here and there, a few breaks here and there, but as they got into the game, you know, doing what they got to do, putting pressure on the ball. We got the easy buckets by Irvin, two threes, back to back, kind of boosts up a little bit, and the defense was tremendous on on Nick Young and also Henry. You know, that's what turns it on. When you play great defense, aggressive defense, good things happen. I just remember hearing Dino Smiley say yesterday during the uh, the uh, conference finals that Jug Life's not out of the game and they come back and win. So that was resonating in my head, like they're gonna come back and win. I think they were down by four or something at halftime. And I thought, okay, we're gonna have a close game. We're gonna go down to the Y in the fourth quarter and that surely didn't happen. Jug Life struggled in the uh, defensively. BB4L kept their composure and they played like true champions. Jug Life not having a solid PG uh, hurt them. Like basketball for Life started on fire. Started very well. Um, I think the problem with Jug Life is they put it all in the hands of JaVale McGee and Nick, Nick Young too early. Um, I feel everybody should have played a role and uh, touched the ball a little bit on Jug Life. Uh, that's how I feel. I just feel like they didn't have no guards, so our pressure got to them a lot. And that was our main thing, just getting up in them, making them turn the ball over. Uh, basically, uh, Nick and uh, Jug Life didn't play enough defense. Uh, they kind of lost hold of the game in the second half. Uh, BD and uh, the rest of those guys across other teams just played extremely well. They were moving the ball. You can tell their team is really unselfish. You can tell they were playing for the right reasons and trying to have fun. What was a big moment, uh, the game changer, where you know that you, you, y'all were the champs? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that tip jam. Man. I didn't even think I was gonna get that one. That that tip jam I had, I, I knew at that point it was over. Um, we got to be mindful of everybody that's coming in um, on the court. We know tensions is going to be high, so we have to monitor that as well. There's a call that happened where they call a technical foul on him, on the, on the other player, and they changed it and made it double tech, well, triple tech, with two of our players and just one of theirs. Well, the reason why um, I played that, um, after Viper Henry had the uh, flop of the year, which I thought was hilarious, if I think, uh, I felt if the altercation didn't happen, it would have been just funny with that. But uh, just tempers flared, um, people got hot, everybody wanted to be a chief, nobody wanted to be an Indian, everybody wanted to be upset. I'm like, come on, man, we almost done with this game. Just play, let's all be cool. You know, we all love each other. I love you, bro. Since high school, Lil Wood Dominion, I love you, bro. I'm just glad it didn't escalate too much. And I had to play that song, and let's all, we, we in a good space, man. It's a championship game, <laughs> we all good. And then Casper Ware went off. When Casper hit, I want to say five or six threes, 
in a row. Oh, and then, of course, Caps hit those three, four, five, however many threes he hit. I mean, it was done. It was done at that point. And then the third quarter came around, and that's when Cass erupted it for 27. Never seen nothing like that in Drew history. Man, it was just like, once the first two went in, I felt like I couldn't miss no more. See ya. I feel like all of them was going to go in the basket got big. And my teammates kept giving me the ball. They had confidence I was going to keep making the next one. And then the next one. Wow, I mean, something like that, the way it turned on in the third quarter, it was a press. I haven't seen a big third quarter like that in a while for Casper Jr. to do something like that. So it's like the bass was this yeah, big once it's the first two. You so after that, it was that. just on. It was just like once you get in the zone, you can't miss. You know, you just can't miss. Every time you put something up, it's going in. He got one shot, three point off the glass. That just let you know when you're in that zone, you ain't going to miss. Anything like that, just, not just Casper, just any. I haven't saw that since my dad on YouTube. The uh, third quarter when Casper Ware went off, um, that's truly something special. Being in this era of the Drew and watching the documentary and seeing or hearing about uh, Casper Ware Sr. being the realest candidate in the game and going off for 32 in that championship game in that uh, documentary, and here Casper doing almost the same thing, going off for 28 in the third quarter, which is unheard of, hitting all those threes, getting the crowd riled up. I've never seen that for. Uh, somebody of that caliber. Um, he, of course, he's going to be a household name after this. I already know that. And hopefully he can get in the league and do the same thing. I think what we saw from Casper Ware Jr. Uh, doing what his dad did 30 years ago in a championship game in 1987. And uh, he duplicated that to the point today with 33 points and, and great play all the way through and excellent defense. What was I thinking? I was thinking about his dad. Uh, when I seen him play 30 years before that in a championship game when Big Cash dropped 47, it was reminiscent of his dad because his dad got on him right after the championship and said, I still went up to you in the championship. Casper Jr. got started, went for 20 sec, 27 in the, in the third quarter. That's awesome. That's very impressive. So it was just um, no stopping on on the end from there. And for C-Dub, man, oh, man, it's just one of those days. You had to be there, man, to be there. I love it when they represent Detroit because, you know, that's where I was born and raised in Detroit, Seven Mile and Van Dyke, east side Detroit, and then slowly stayed around that area as well, then slowly came out of that area. So I love it when they, you know, bring out Detroit and L.A., you know, it's, it's awesome to give a lot of support to Detroit and where my hometown is to put on our city, you know, but also I love L.A. too. It's awesome to be out here. In, in, 
end of the game was great, man. You know what I'm saying? The, hey, you know, Casper uh, Ware's team, man, they blew him out. Coming into the game, I honestly wasn't even expecting this. I didn't really care too much about the awards. I just wanted to win a championship. That's all I cared about. Of course, I appreciated this award. It meant a lot to me. Uh, most inspiration. It meant a lot, you know, for the kids that I coach, for the people who know me, um, to you know, be happy for me about that. But I, I came here for the for the championship, to be honest. And I was very very happy with our performance today. And I wanted to make the, you know, have a game where the fans get to see a good game, not not a blowout. But uh, at the same time, congratulations to them, and um, you know, uh, next next year. I'm just happy we, we made history today. Happy for B, uh, Baron Davis for you know believing in us and getting this great group together, and we did it. So I'm happy. Wow, I retired. I didn't coach the last couple of years, but being in the stands screaming and yelling, it's just like I was on the floor coaching as well, doing the same thing. But no, I mean, just the way the, 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 way the game ended was terrific for these young men. They fought hard enough last year. They was in the um, semis, didn't do well in the semis, but could have had two teams the years before, and they could have went to the finals, could have been the cheaters, cheaters, but it wasn't. But it's all good. But now, hey, they, everything is over with. They did what they had to do. Names goes on the banner. See where, er where, it's all good. So that I have them on the banner with me as well. I'm just proud for them. Yes. DA said, Tim, go play. I play. DA said he want to go 15 and 0. We did that. DA said, get the ball to Cass. We did that. DA said, get the ball to Stan. We did that. DA said, get the ball to T Ross. We did that. We told DA to coach. DA coached, and we won. That's what happened. That, that's, that. And we had fun. My party started on Friday morning for this championship. We already knew, you know, we're not now that the party is over, we already knew we were gonna be at the dance. We started on Friday. 15 and 0, what does it mean? Uh, it means a lot. Like like nobody team can say, oh, we could have beat them, we could beat them, because nobody beat us not once. So anybody say anything, it's BS <laughs> pretty much. So that's what it means to me. Well when you look at it, we've only had one other undefeated team, uh, which was problems. Um, they were the only undefeated team that won their championship. We've had undefeated teams go to the final and lose it, but uh, only been two in 43 years, so that was a special year for them. I think no doubt they stand as one of the greatest champions in the Drew League because uh, this, uh, this year we had 28 teams. When Problems won it, they had 24 teams. 
it's harder with four more teams in the mix and more NBA players and more international players. It feels great because this is like my NBA, so it feels wonderful. That's big, man, because uh, we didn't really set out to be undefeated. It just came upon maybe about the ninth, tenth week that we were still undefeated. We were like, hey, let's just go ahead and finish out undefeated and do this, and that's what we did. Man, when I left two years ago, I got my team to the championship. We won that one. Broke my ankle. This year, man, it was all about redeeming myself, redemption, seeing what I could do. And I came out here and competed, man. And you, the birdies, I'm not a rapper. I'm a basketball player. Came here with basketball players. And we're a family. They accepted me with open arms. And you see what's on my hat. I've been coming to the Drew for years, ever since I was in college at USC. So uh, the atmosphere has always been the same. Just the, the, the surroundings are getting better and better. Uh, being out Southwest is a great atmosphere. It's always been a great uh, place to play pickup and do these things, type of things. But to, the atmosphere in the Drew was great. Even when a fight broke, broke out, it was peaceful. They broke it up the right way. And that's, that's even better for the black African-American community. The energy was great. I think everybody had a great time, brought the kids out. It was just a family affair, and I can't wait to continue uh, year 44 next year, next year. Great day, great facility, excellent crowd. Man, this is just one, one beautiful day for Drew basketball. The only squad, the only people we're missing is Eugene Phelps, Charles, Bugatti, and Stanley Johnson. We got a big, big squad. I love them. Love these guys. Love these players. Love Dino Smiley in the Drew League. BB for life. It's been a great summer. I, I'm a very, very grateful and thankful to be out here from Detroit. And everyone else is pretty much LA guys. Pretty much, I think so. And we're just glad to be out here. Look at the squad. Loving it. BB 2016 champs. We're ready to come back next summer and bring it all we can again. Anything else you want to add? We won. 15-0. <laughs> for life. <laughs>